We have been in a series for the last number of weeks, and we've been looking at some of the greatest worship songs that we sing here in church, and some of the songs that, that we have sang in years gone past too. We, we uh, have looked at some of the modern greats, uh, uh, and we have looked at some of the, uh, the older great songs. Like we started off in week one, we talked about Amazing Grace, and I really believe that set us up for this whole series, talking about the goodness and the grace of God. So today... I want to talk about the goodness of God. It was the last song we sang this morning. And I absolutely love that song. It's an amazing song. Written by Jen Johnson from Bethel Church. She wrote it, she said, when talking about the song, she said she wrote it one day while she was reflecting on the goodness of God while she was in the middle of the adoption of their fourth child. She said while she was driving her car, she said she was just reflecting on how good and how great God has been to her. She said the words just came out of her mouth. The song starts off, I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All of my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. And isn't that an amazing song? Ever since we've been doing it in church here for the last probably three years now, and every time we sing it, it's just like, you know what? That takes me into the presence of God. If there's any song that we do in church, that's the one that takes me into the presence of God. When we started to put this series together a few months back now, uh, and I was thinking about, okay, what are we going to do? What songs are we going to do? And Amazing Grace, that was number one, because it's the song we all know, and it's, it's, it's an amazing song. But number two for me was the goodness of God from day one. That was penciled in there, in, in, in the list. The goodness of God. Got to do the goodness of God. And actual fact, the goodness of God, I put down for number two. That was what I was going to do as the second part of this series. Because I thought, you know what? Let's open, open, open up with uh, amazing grace. Then let's talk about the goodness of God. But when we had amazing grace done, and it was time to, for me to sit down and finish off the goodness of God, because normally what I'll do is uh, I'll pick the four different Topics that we're going to teach on for the four weeks. And, and I'll maybe do a, a few pages of notes or a few pages within the message. And that's what I had done on this one. But when I sat down to finish this one, I was like brain freeze. Anyone ever get brain freeze? And it's like, I'm, I was giving out to myself. I was like, you know God is good. You've experienced the goodness of God. This should be easy for you to communicate the goodness of God. But I mean, I struggled. I struggled so much with it one day that I said, you know what, let's just push this back to number four. I'll leave this till I'm, I've gotten through the rest of them, and I'll finish up with the goodness of God. So then, last week when I went to finish it, I was like, oh, right, okay, right, we, we have to finish this one, do we? So we had to finish it. And I was thinking, I was asking myself, why am I finding this hard? And I believe I've been finding this hard because I know God is good. You know God is good. But it doesn't always feel sometimes that we feel the goodness of God, does it? Because of that little word there called circumstances. And we all go through circumstances in our life. And in these circumstances, it feels like that the enemy gets every weapon in his arsenal and throws it at us. And it feels like sometimes and some days that, that it feels like the goodness of God has deserted us even though we know it hasn't. But it feels like that, doesn't it? I mean, it's easy to worship God and praise God and give Him thanks when the sun is shining and when everything is going in our way. But I know, and you know, that when the sun is not shining and when things are not going your way, it's not nearly as easy to give God praise or to worship Him. It's kind of like, that this life that we live, it seems like sometimes that it's set up as one big test for us. I mean, we're traveling along sometimes, and it's great. It's brilliant. We'll go weeks and months maybe without ever having to, to face a challenge. And, and it's, we're singing praises as we go along in our car, and we're giving God thanks. And, and then it's like you reach that heaviness. You go through a few days of, of heaviness, of struggle, of of it's like the, the enemy has picked your name out of the hat this week and he's thrown everything at you. And it's in those times that it's not as easy to think about, to give God thanks for, or to worship 
the goodness of God. But what I want to challenge you today is that in the good days, give God thanks for his goodness. And in the tough days, in the hard days, you know, you know those days where you know, nothing seems to be good or right? Find something in those days to give God thanks for his goodness. Amen? I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All of my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love you, Lord, because your mercy never fails me. Psalms 100 and verse 1, it says that we are too, and this is a command to us, that we are to make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. We are to serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. We are to know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. We are to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. We are to be thankful to him and bless his name. Why? Because the Lord is good. For his mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations, even today. Amen? Church, let's not be fair weather worshipers of God. Worship him when things are going well. And then when things are not going well, just saying, hey, listen, I just need to park this for a while. I'll, I'll definitely come back to it. Ladies, you can check out for... No, he can't. No, no, no permission. But I'm going to talk about sport just for a minute. All right? Just for a minute. I love sport. I'm a, I'm a sports fan. I love sport. I'll watch any kind of sport. I was drawn this week to watch people climb up a wall. Anybody else watch people climb up a wall this week? I, I mean, I was just flicking through the channels, and I was drawn to watching people climb up a wall. I've seen it in the Olympics before, but I'd never actually seen it on television since then. And, I, and when I watched it in the Olympics, I thought, hmm, I might watch that if I've seen it again. And I did. I did. I love sports. So this not, might not mean something to, anybody, to, to some people here, but it, it means something to me. And if I can express this properly, I think maybe, maybe it'll, it'll mean something to you afterwards. Okay. Notts County are a football club in England. They are actually the oldest football club in the world. They were formed in 1862. Oldest football team in the world. And, and they're not a really good team. Let me just say that to start off. But they were there at the founding of the English Football League in 1888. Now, stay with me, women. This is not an opportunity for you to check out. They once, and I say once because it only happened once, they once beat Manchester United 4-0, but they beat Liverpool a couple of times 3-0. They have in the past, they have won the FA Cup, and they completed, competed, should I say, at the top flight in football in England up until 1992. Back in 1992 was the last year that they played in the top flight in England. They averaged attendance that year of 11,000 people. Now, I never said they were big. 11,000 people was their average attendance that year. Today, the club plays in a league of Division 5 in England, so it's way down there. They play every week against teams that you wouldn't have ever heard of. I've barely heard of them myself. But to, to think of a team that once played regularly against Manchester United and the Chelsea's and the Arsenal's and the Tottenham's of, of, of this world, to now playing against teams you've never heard of, in the year that they were last played in the top flight, they averaged 11,000 people per game. Last year, playing against teams you never heard of, never heard of, the average attendance of 8,000 people. Here's my question. Why? Why do those people every week, those 8,000 people every week, and more some weeks, up to 11, 12,000, last year they actually broke a record for that league in attendance. Why do people every week go and support a team that plays against teams we've never heard of. You know why? Because they're not fair weather fans. They support their team when their team is doing well, 
and they support their team when their team is doing horrible. And their team has done horribly in the past. Every week, and I listen, I'm not a show and tell person, <laughs> and I'm not a fan of theirs, but I just thought this week, because it was notable, <laughs> I'm trying to teach you about not being fair weather fans of God. Every week, whether their team is doing well, or whether their team is playing horribly, whether their team is playing in the Premier League or in a conference league, way away, ever away from chance of playing big teams again. They put on their scarves, they put on their jerseys, and they travel in their thousands to support their team. Why? Because it's their team. And they're not fair weather followers of their team. I want to encourage us as a church that when times are going good, let's worship God. Let's praise Him. Let's gather together. Let's lift His name up and worship Him. But when times are not going so good, when we go through tough times, and we will, let's be honest, we will. There's no one ever promised you because you're a Christian that you'll never have a hard day, that hardship will never come. It will come. Let's be honest. But in the day that it does come, Let's be like the Notts County fan and let's worship God anyway. It's easy, so easy when things are going well to jump out of the bed in the morning when the sun is coming through the window and throw our arms up in the air and say, thank God for this wonderful, amazing day. Oh, Mr. Bird, you're singing so well this morning. But it's not as easy on a morning, maybe like this morning, when the wind is hitting off the window when everything in your life seems to be just that bit tougher than it should be, when it feels like that the presence of God is, is gone anywhere but in, in your home, it's in that day when you don't feel like it that you got to get out of the bed. you got to put on your scarf or your garment of praise and you got to worship God anyway. Amen? Anyway. Worship Him in the good times, definitely. But it is so vital that we as people acknowledge and worship our God in the hard times. Amen? Because, listen, that's going to make the difference whether we are followers of God or not. You mind if I take this off? It's a little bit warm. It's, you know, it's June. Worship God in the good times, but press in and worship God even in the bad times. Let's not be people who only turn up when things are going great. Let's be the ones who turn up despite what's going on in our lives. Amen? Psalms 34, it says there in verse 1, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will be continually in my mouth. It says, I will bless Him always, at all times. When I have the answer, and more crucially, when I'm waiting for the answer. Amen? How many of you, how many of you, and we've all done it. I shouldn't ask even how many because we've all done it. How many of you, when you're waiting for the answer, find it hard to say thank God? But when the answer comes through the letterbox, or when the answer comes to you, go, oh, thank God. Thank God I got it. We need to be those who are, while we're waiting for the letter to come through the post box, when we're waiting for the result, when we're waiting for the answer, we got to be, thank God. Thank God, you're good God. You're good, you're faithful God. Thank God. I will bless the Lord at all times. When I have the answer and when I'm waiting for the answer. When you're winning and when you're not. You see, it's a natural reaction for us to question the goodness of God when it seems like the enemy is on top. Amen? And it's a natural reaction then for us to run from the presence of God. When the opposite should be our reaction. When the enemy seems to get on top of our lives, we need to run to God. Amen? We need to turn up all the more when the enemy seems to be getting on top of our lives. Because the enemy will always be on top of our lives if we run away from God. Amen? But when the enemy seems to get on top of our lives and we run to God, well, the enemy can't run to God. Amen? He's always traveling in the opposite direction from God. Because he's afraid of God. Amen? Amen? Do you know our daddy is much bigger than the enemy? Amen? And when we take shelter under the wings of our father, the enemy can't go there. 
Amen? Not that he's not welcome there. He just can't go there. Amen? He's been banished from the sight of God. So if when the enemy starts to get on top of our lives that we run away from God, the enemy is rubbing his hands together. Amen? But it should be the opposite. When the enemy gets a hole in your life, run to God. Because the enemy can't stand in the presence of our God. Amen? Amen. God said to us in Hebrews 13 and verse 5, He said that He will never leave us or forsake us. Amen? Amen? He will never leave us and He will never forsake us. Why? Because His mercy never fails us. He's a merciful God. Amen? Amen. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 4 says, But God who is rich in mercy because of His great love which He has loved us even when we were dead in our trans- trespasses made us alive together with Christ for by grace you have been saved. Amen? Amen? Even when we are far from God God extended His grace and His mercy to us. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Do you know if we only knew and I often think about this, and when we, when we pray, I often pray this. That if we only knew everything that God does in the background of our lives, we would never be up off our knees. I mean, if we only knew what God is actually doing, even at this moment, with stuff that's going on in our lives that we don't know about, I mean, we'd never be off our knees. One of the prayers that we pray is, thank God, for keeping us from the things that we never knew about. Because make no mistake, we have an enemy. And the enemy's plan is to kill, steal, and destroy. Amen? And, and that's what he's always, always plotting and trying to do in our lives. So I think sometimes we forget about all the things that God has done for us that we've no clue about. I think we'll be in heaven someday. And God will show us that film, that reel, of all the things that he protected us from, kept us safe from. And I think we'll go, wow. God, I thought you had abandoned me, Lord, in that circumstance, in that situation. I I didn't think you were anywhere to be found, Lord. I didn't realize that you were doing this in the background. God is working in the background of our lives. Amen? Amen. He's working in the forefront of our lives too, but He's working all around our lives. Amen? Amen. And I, I think we, we forget about all the times that God has protected us, healed us, delivered us, kept us safe, and times that we never even realized. Amen? Amen. It's kind of like we're just walking through life, not realizing of all these bombs and all of these attacks that's going on all around us. You know, and God is, is making a way for us, and we're just, we just keep walking. We just keep walking. We, we're not realizing that God is making a way as we walk. Amen? The truth is that we don't have any idea of what God is doing in our lives. But that's the thing that we can give God thanks for. Lord, I thank you for making a way in my life. I thank you, Lord, for protecting me from those things, Lord God, that the enemy shoots and fires at me. That you protect me from. Amen? Unfortunately, even with us Christians, God is only as good as His last performance. That because He didn't show up in my life this week or because He didn't answer that prayer for me this week, well then, oh, I don't know where God's gone. Don't ever treat God as like He was human. Don't ever, because that's the way we treat people, don't we? You know, I've done this for you, I've done that for you, but what have you done for me lately? Don't ever treat God like that, amen? We have no clue of what God is continually doing in the background of our lives, amen? Don't ever forget about all the things that God has done for you in the past. Don't be like the children of Israel. Deuteronomy 6 and 12, it tells us there, be careful that you do not forget the Lord who has brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Church, we should be careful to remember all the times that God has rescued us, blessed us, provided for us, healed us in the past before we start complaining that He's let us down today. Can you imagine how Moses must have felt 
after leading the children of Israel out of slavery in Egypt into the promised land. And when the very first one of them got a dry mouth, they started to complain. Oh, you've brought us out here into the desert for us to die. Could we not leave us where we were? And I can imagine God going, I brought you out of slavery. I protected you from all of those plagues. And I'm bringing you into a promised land. But then the children of Israel pipe up and say, yeah, well, what have you done for me today? Church, never forget what God has done for you in the past. Never forget his goodness of, of all the times that he's blessed you, provided for you, took care of you, healed you. Don't be one of those people who treat you like you're only as good as your last performance. Amen? Amen. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. You know, God doesn't respond to attitude. Let me just throw that out there first. Amen? Every one of us, sometimes when we, when we are looking for some, something off someone and, and they don't give it to us or they're a little bit slow about giving it to us, we give them a little bit of attitude, don't we? You know, you're withholding from me, so, you know, give them a little bit of attitude. Maybe that'll get them moving. But here's the thing. God doesn't respond to attitudes. God only responds to our faith. Amen? Yes. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1, it says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. Now when we come to God with a need, we need to have faith in Him, to believe that He is good and He'll do what He said He would do. Amen? Yes. Faith is not complaining. Faith is not pouting until you get your own or get what you want. Faith is not giving up after a few minutes or a few days or a few weeks or even a few years. That's not faith, amen? Faith is the assurance, it's a trust in God that He's do what He said He would do. Amen? And when we display this faith, it brings joy to our Father's heart. There is no happier Father than when He sees their, His children trusting him at his word and we need to trust God at his word in verse 6 there of Hebrews chapter 11 it says without faith it is impossible to please him for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him you see that last line there our God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him those who press into him those who don't give up on him if they don't find it in the first five minutes. Like a lot of times we do at home if we don't find something at home in the first five minutes, we give up on it. But let me tell you that nothing good was ever found easy. That's the truth. Nothing good was ever found. Nothing good was ever gained easy. Gold was never found in the book of the coal. Amen? Amen? Nothing valuable was ever found easy. It takes many, many years of hard work and perseverance. Amen? So don't give up on God. When you're trusting God, when you're believing God for something, don't give up on Him because you don't receive it in the first five minutes, five days, or five weeks. Press in. Press into God. He is a good God. If He said He'd do it, He will do it. Trust Him. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9, it says, And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Everything has a season. Amen? Everything has a due season. If you planted those carrots yesterday, they're not going to be fully grown carrots tomorrow. Got to give them time. Amen? Got to give them time. Everything has a season. God says, don't grow weary while doing good. Don't get tired while you're doing good. Don't get tired in the waiting. Don't get tired when you're waiting for that breakthrough. In due season, you will reap if you do not lose heart. Now, who created the seasons? God. Who ordained the seasons? God. Who decides when the seasons come or go? God. So God is the one who ordains God is the one who will bring the thing about in due season. Amen? Amen? Song goes, I love you, Lord. 
For your mercy never fails me. All of my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. Your mercy never fails me. All of my days, all of your days, God holds in his hands. Psalms 145 and verse 9, it says, The Lord is good to all. Praise God. And his tender mercies are over all of his works. God's tender mercies and goodness are all over you, even if you don't realize it. They are. God has been good to you. Amen? Amen. Deuteronomy 31 and verse 6, it says, Be strong and of good courage, and do not fear or be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, He is the one who goes with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing, I will talk about, I will live in, I will experience the goodness of God. This week I talked to, uh, just as I was finished this message, I had actually put the amen at the bottom of this message. And, and when, while I was doing it, at the same time, I was, I was messaging a pastor friend of mine. And I thought I'd done this. So you'd have been actually getting ready to go down and get your tea and coffee. And if it wasn't for him. <laughs> so I thought I'd finished it. And I, I messaged a friend of mine, uh, a pastor friend of mine, who's been experiencing some health difficulties there for the last five or six weeks. So the, uh, when I talk to him five or six, I message him usually every week. But I messaged him five or six weeks ago and he said that he had been feeling weak recently, that he couldn't go to his car without feeling weak. I actually walk to his car. He's a young guy, but about my age. <laughs> young. And he's, he's slim like me. Maybe a little bit slimmer. But he has no health problems. So when this all came upon him, he was kind of like, oh, what's, what's going on? So he said he had a few tests coming up. So he said, will you pray for us? You know, while I'm going through this test. So I believe the tests were in the last couple of weeks, so I texted him again this week, and I said, listen, we're, we're praying for you, we're still believing God for the very best outcome in your situation. And he came back to me, and he said, well, I had the test, and he said, the doctor said I had blockage in the arteries of my heart. So I was like, okay. He said, but he said, you know, that he was shook by that news. He said, and he went to his doctor, he said his doctor was great, and his doctor was putting some stents in and the doctor was going to blow, blow out, balloon or something like that, the artery of his heart. And he said, while the doctor was doing it, now I don't understand all of this, but this is what he said. He said, while the doctor was putting the stents in, he said to him, he said, what I'm doing now is I'm adding years to your life. Okay? And then he said, when he was blowing out the artery in his heart, he said, now what I'm doing, and he said he said this four times. He said, now what I'm doing is I'm adding quality to the rest of your life. And my friend said, and this was completely, I hadn't talked to him about what I was doing. He said, this week, he said, I've experienced the goodness of God. And I just thought, you know what? That's just perfect. God is good. In all circumstances, in all situations, He is good. And He is working things out for us. If we only trust Him, and if we only allow him to, he is working these things out for us. I want to finish with this. At the very end of the song, it goes, your goodness is running after me. And I got a picture in my mind every time I sing and hear that part of the song about God's goodness running after us. And I'm always thinking, well, if God's goodness is running after me, I have a choice to make. I can keep running in the opposite direction and keep running away from God and never fully experience the goodness of God in my life. Or I can just stand still and go, Lord, overflow me. And I think that's what we got to do as, as a church, as a people. We got to stop running away from God when times are hard, when times are tough. And we got to allow, even in those hard times, just to stop. And maybe sometimes in the hard times, got to stop thinking because we spend more time thinking in the hard times than any other time and we just got to go Lord let your goodness overflow me I'm not going to run away from you Lord I know you're chasing me down so stop running away from God one last scripture it's in 1 Chronicles chapter 
16 and verse 34, it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His mercies endures forever. Amen?